Action and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is really my great honor and pleasure to be here again, two and a half years, right? And I am very happy to see the, the Trico family, all of you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, this is my disclosure slide. And there are some topics about the, the OCT image at the moment, but uh, because of time limitation, I would like to focus on chronic coronary syndrome, especially diffuse uh, long complex region and severe calcification and bifurcation. If I will have enough time, I just uh, touch to the, the acute coronary syndrome, right? So let's start the, the long diffuse region. This is in the case of uh, long diffuse region. You can identify uh, from the, the proximal to the, the mid LAD. There are lots of uh, disease and uh, very long. If you try to get a clear image by OCD, it is important to have an enough diameter. So if we push in the uh, OCD catheter within a disc, a condition you cannot get a clear image. That is very important to do the pre dilatation using a 2.0 or 2.5 balloon. And then after then you can get a clear image. This is a post dilatation image. Uh, yeah, uh, here we have a lot of master and uh, expert of the, the image, so it's quite easy to understand. Uh, only one pullback but it might be very difficult for the beginner. Therefore, I try to yes, explain in detail. And when you do the, the P, uh, stent, it is very important uh, algorithm at the moment, MLD max. Uh, the initial M means in the morphology and there is a length and the, the, the diameter, right? So put a, a, OC, a, put a, a stenting, it is important to identify morphology, length and diameter. After putting a stand, we have to check the marks. I will uh, discuss later. So uh, it's for the beginner, it's quite easy to understand what really is seen by OCT. If there are signal-rich homogeneous pattern, that is in a fibrous. And if you identify the signal poor, clear border, it is calcium, right? If it is the, the, uh, signal poor, diffuse border, it might be very difficult uh, where to uh, start, uh, right, the attenuation, that is in the repeat. If you uh, know the, this con uh, yeah, pattern, I would like to say 95% correct. Another 5%, it depends on the case, right? It depends on your experience. So this is a, a yeah, OCT case. This is a quite easy yeah, fibrous plug, right, and uh, fibrous uh, Hyper, uh, yeah, uh, intimal hyper, uh, uh, yeah, right. This is a calcium, right? Circular calcium. This is a calcium, right? Spot calcium, lipidic plug, and the lipidic plug from uh, 9 to uh, 3, right? But the real world is much more uh, complex. Here, you can clearly uh, speculate the circular calcium, but within circular calcium, there are lots of attenuation. That means uh, lipid uh, yes, uh, content or uh, macrophage, right? And also, this is uh, lots of uh, superficial calcium with uh, lots of uh, signal poor region. So real world is much more complex, but uh, you can easily identify by OCT. It is much more easier than the IVAS. And this is uh, our re recent data. Uh, compared with IBUS, uh, accuracy of the diagnosis is much better, right, uh, by OCT. And so let's m uh, back to the uh, uh, initial image. Here uh, you can identify it as a lots of complex and some dissection because after uh, pre dilatation, and you can identify the calcium here, calcium here. Lots of calcium in this case. However, each calcium angle is very narrow, and also we have a lot of fibrous uh, portion. Therefore, uh, we can dilate uh, much more by a, a, a high-pressure non-component balloon, and we can put a stent without any ablation. Then uh, yeah, and we have to decide the stent length and, and diameter. So. Uh, try to identify nearly normal portion in the distal part and the diameter is 2.0 or 2.1 and the proximal part uh, we would like 
to put the stand within the LED. So proximal part, some disease in just proximal site, but the uh, uh, diameter is 2.5. Uh, if you use uh, the, the di diameter, uh, you can think about the quarter size bigger uh, balloon or stunt. And if you use the EEL to EEL, you can think about uh, the quarter size smaller, right? Then we select, uh, and the length is uh, 48, so uh, we decided to put uh, two stunt, right? I already explained, like, 42. And MLD max, Le region length is very important. Uh, we compared the OCT and IBUS at the same time in the same patient and also the phantom model. The OCT measurement length is quite correct and cu uh, accurate. Uh, you can expect a good correlation between IBUS and OCT and stand OCT and stand IBUS, but uh, yeah, uh, OCT mistake only a, a one millimeter. It depends on the case. But I was sometimes miss three millimeter. That is uh, important information, I think. So how to decide the stand size? As I told you, if you use the, the vessel diameter, right, uh, the quarter size smaller, and if you use the lumen diameter, quarter size bigger, right? And also we have to avoid the plaque burden and less than, it should be less than 50% and non lipidic as uh, Dr. Patel, uh, in the morning he said, if there are uh, lipidic plaque at the landing zone, the instant, uh, no, no, edge uh, stenosis is significantly high uh, compared with a fibrous or fibrocalcific or a completely normal site. And therefore, we selected the 2.526 uh, and 2.7526. And then uh, we did an IVAS, right, an uh, no, OCT, right? So the distal diameter is 2.2 to, uh, so it, it is, uh, we expected, and uh, the proximal side is 2.9. So at least we need a uh, three millimeter. Therefore, the, the stand size should be okay. And then uh, the, uh, under, uh, there are some minimum lumen site is uh, uh, only uh, 3.6 square millimeter and diameter stenosis is 16. But we think about the, uh, the, the percent diameter stenosis calculation. But anyway, uh, post uh, PCI, we have to check uh, the MSA should be more than 5.5 uh, by IBUS and 4.5 by a OCT and uh, more than 80% compared with the reference area. And the marrow position should be less than 400 micron and less than one millimeter length. And this edge it should be a less than 60 degree and within a intima and less than two millimeter lengths. As you know, this isn't a, a guideline expert consensus, but we have to think about uh, the, the person diameter stenosis measurement. If we have a big branch, uh, suddenly diameter change as shown in this slide or in this slide. So uh, the simple comparison between uh, uh, distal and proximal and uh, MSC site is not uh, good. Because if you uh, compare the, the FFR and the, the percent diameter stenosis from the, the proximal and distal, uh, correlation is bad. But if you think about the, uh, the sudden uh, yeah, branch change, side, side branch change after big branch, you can get a good correlation, right? So we, we move uh, this uh, proximal reference to the uh, little bit distal to the diagonal, and then area stenosis becomes uh, 26. A little bit smaller than the uh, eighty percent, but uh, you, you can identify the uh, big calcium and the eccentric calcium on the opposite side is completely normal. If you dilate more, you may have the risk of the uh, rupture of the coronary artery. That is uh, the very important. That is the reason why we have to uh, identify the morphology first, and then length and diameter. That is the reason why a MLD it comes, right? So after putting a stent, we have to think about max uh, uh, med medial dissection, in, especially in the distal part and a position and expansion, right? And the expansion is the most important cause of restenosis, right? So uh, we put a stent and this is the final result, right? Very good condition. And then uh, we also try to uh, check, the, uh, yes, uh, OCT. So OCT may change an geographically complex region to relatively simple, right? The, a complex treatment might 
cause uh, some uh, complication. Therefore, simple way is the best. So angio co-registration or measurement with lumen profile and so on is very useful. So move to the uh, severe calcium. Not only uh, multiple calcium, but also the tiny small calcium is sometimes uh, become a problem. This is a case in 60s years old for the angina, right? And uh, angiography shows uh, the, uh, yeah, relatively simple region. It's quite easy to put a one stand, right? However, you can identify the, some calcium deposition here, right? Just the, the, the bifurcation of the uh, diagonal branch here and here. And this is an OCT image from the distal part. Yeah. Here are some yeah, plaque there, and the uh, yeah, lumen is a uh, uh, little bit better. Yeah, and here, crack calcium and diagonal. Okay, let's uh, show the, the steel frame right uh, later. But it's a very eccentric plaque, and uh, the uh, uh, position is on the myocardial side. Therefore, we did a uh, pullback orbi uh, orbital telectomy, and then confirm the OCT. We did a high speed, as shown in this slide. This is in a steel frame before PCI, right? We can identify the diagonal branch here. And here is a very thick spotty calcium, right? If you put a stand simply, Carina shift may pinch the diagonal. That may make a trouble. Therefore, we try to abrade uh, yeah, this portion. Uh, and luckily, the, the wire bias is here, therefore, it is very easy to upgrade during pullback or telectomy. We confirm the low speed. You can identify the abrasion portion here and also uh, high, uh, yes, pullback uh, four times. We, we can upgrade very clearly and thickness becomes uh, 300 to 500. So we can uh, make a crack if you uh, I use the high pressure balloon. That is a result, right? Uh, we, uh, we succeed to make a crack and then put a stand and get a good result as shown in the uh, right hand side, right? Let's move on to another case, non-STEMI and uh, previously CABG patient. This is an uh, CABG, when the patient comes with an unstable angina, right? Very tight stenosis and uh, flow delay to the CX. Here also the uh, different angle, you can identify very tight stenosis, 99% stenosis. Then it's in very eccentric and uh, yes. If you try to use the rotabulator from the, the first, there are some risk of perforation based on that calcium uh, goes to the, the other side, also the, the uh, perforate due to the deep cut, right? So we did then also the uh, orbital telectomy first yeah, this is an OCT. You can identify circular calcium and abrade this portion very well and then comes to the LAD and the left main, right? Some abrasion here. So we could get the root of the uh, rotabulator. Then we can use the much bigger uh, rotabulator. This is a result of the uh, ro low speed orbital telectomy. Some abrasion here and here is an LAD and here uh, is the abrasion portion, right? Then we did an rotabulator using a two millimeter bar. And then uh, this is a result of the angiography. And this is a result of an uh, OCT. You can identify the big aberration with a calcium site, right? And still there are lots of calcium in uh, the, uh, the left main here, uh, here, right? Therefore, we give up to put a stent. In this case, we did a drug coated balloon and followed, right? Yeah, this is a steel frame result. You can identify the very good ablation here, right? So OCT gives us a lot of information how to treat the lesion, right? And if you want to try to put a stand, it is very important uh, to make a crack, as I told you, right? Like this. And if uh, the thickness of the calcium is uh, less than 500 micron, you can put a stand and good uh, uh, result, uh, good expansion. If there are uh, no calcium fracture, uh, minimum stent area is smaller and stent expansion is less and uh, listenos is uh, significantly high. But if you succeed to make a calcium fracture, 
Yes, a binary list loss and the TLR is smaller. There are some calcium scoring system uh, from uh, one to uh, zero to four, depend on the angle and thickness and length, right, as shown in this slide. And uh, recently, uh, today, uh, you already know the, uh, the shock wave. Uh, and if it is uh, very circular calcium and difficult to operate, you can use the shock wave. There are some algorithm recommendations. If you cross the balloon, you can use a cutting balloon and then uh, optimal uh, ballooning and stenting. Uh, but if it is not difficult, yes, time limitation. Thank you. Right, and uh, uh, you try to do the, the finally the, uh, the uh, yeah, shock wave, and then uh, you can get a good result by standing. So recent OCT demonstrate auto, uh, in, yeah, uh, artificial intelligence. It's quite easy to uh, ma make an, a measurement of the angle and length as shown in this slide. So I uh, would like to say in case of severe calcification, it should be very important to assess the thickness and distribution of the calcium and wire bias. Also, the confirmation of multiple calcium plate fracture is very important before putting a stent. So finally, I just touch about the, the bifurcation because of the time limitation. Uh, we, we can clearly identify the stent strut and wire condition as shown in this slide by three dimensionally. However, it is not uh, enough to confirm short axis view is very important, uh, stent strut and wire position. And after kissing, you can get a good uh, yeah, um, side branch orifice. We, we put a stand in a, a CTO case and uh, you can identify the, some uh, malware position by the, uh, the color bar, right? Uh, I, yeah, steel frame might be very important. Then I just uh, try to move to the steel frame, right? No, here. You can identify the, the, uh, the uh, overlap of the, uh, the crossover, the, the side branch here, and you can identify a significant uh, malware position. And after pot, you can identify the very wonderful distal stent cell. It's quite easy to select the distal cell. And after a KBT, you can obtain a good attachment of the proximal site. It's quite easy by uh, OCT. And then they try to treat under expansion because distal expansion is 79%. Uh, then uh, we put uh, yeah, post dilate here, and then the result is very good. Uh, 86% stenosis. Therefore, it is very important to identify uh, the uh, uh, medial dissection and uh, the uh, under expansion and marrow position, right? Here is in the branch portion and proximal site is attached very well. And uh, there are only uh, one uh, pilot data showing in the, the how to treat the bifurcation. If there are no link, if you succeed to the uh, distal cell, you can get a good result by KBT. However, if you uh, could not select the proximal site, uh, distal site and proximal region, and you, you, the result is not uh, good. Uh, if you simply dilate here, the, the stent strut goes up to the, the main branch, it is not good, right? And if there are some link, uh, if you do the, uh, even if you succeed to select the distal cell, uh, there are some uh, deformity of the main branch and also the steel strut at the side branch orifice. Uh, main branch is very important. So uh, this is uh, the worst uh, condition, right? And then uh, optimal result and suboptimal result is 50 and 50. If there are no lots of strut at the side branch orifice, uh, the uh, instant listeners is significantly high, but not statistically significant because of the lower number. And uh, therefore, we did uh, the uh, multi center registry uh, uh, over 600 cases. And this is uh, the distribution, right? Uh, we already know the, the condition and optimal result is 65% and uh, uh, suboptimal condition is 35 and co uh, reference is uh, no side branch dilatation. We are expecting the clinical result. So next year or two years later, we can able to uh, present. So the final, uh, yes, home, take home message is OCT may provide stent cell strut and link condition very well by 3D reconstruction and the position expansion indicator is very useful to identify the good result. So thank you very much for your kind attention.